Welcome to another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. I'm very pleased to welcome back Thomas Caldwell, Chairman of Caldwell Securities in Toronto. He appears every month without fail to analyze the latest in economic and financial news. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so what are the biggest risks that you see right now in, uh, in the Canadian and the world economies right now? There's so many, you usually have to filter them out. The, the major risk and the major opportunity are basically the same thing, and that is inflation. Everybody's focused on inflation and what central banks are going to do to try to contain it. Uh, inflation will always be with us at some level, mm. and usually the level is understated by governments. The challenge is that central banks like the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Canada are trying to tighten the system, induce a little bit of pain, cutting back spending, cutting back expectations. And meanwhile, governments on the other side are insisted on spending more money to bubble wrap people from pain, uncomfortableness, or economic setback. So it is a little bit like your foot on the brake and the gas at the same time. Right. So it's a, it's a really weird approach that you don't have fiscal and monetary at least talking to each other or, or trying to accommodate what the other side is doing. But politicians are politicians. And again, that's the Achilles heel of all democracies. They love to spend money to buy votes. So you got all this going on at the same time. But is that a risk or an opportunity? You just have to say that's the game. Yeah. So how do I invest against inflation? That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, speaking of governments spending money, uh, a lot of talk this week about the U.S., and the debt limit discussions going on in the U.S. Congress and with the uh, Biden administration. Some are saying that uh, this has a real chance of the government defaulting on its debts. Uh, how do you calculate that risk? <clears throat> well, I go to history. You might notice that my hair is white. You haven't caught <laughs> up with me yet, but my hair is white. Yeah. And as long as I've been in the, in the investment business, there's always been the drama of raising the budget limit or America defaulting and oh my heavens and everybody jockeys for position and at the end of the day they raise the debt limit but that's right. it I mean so they're going to cut a deal they're going to do something the big challenge though is we are getting out of hand with spending and on the other hand with America the the credit cards being taken away a little bit mm -hmm. you see countries around the world are thinking we we want to settle it other than US dollars when you're a world reserve currency, you have a wonderful advantage. You can print all the money you want, and it's going offshore to fund trade or to allow people to an escape valve to get to get another country. Once you stop doing that, you don't have that scope. I'm not saying that's a big item. That's just the canary in the coal mine, should I say, at this point in time. So it, it's a it's, it's an interesting phenomenon to see at the present. Well, I mean, it's interesting you should mention that too, though, because uh, I, I noticed that there was a. I think there are new applicants to the BRICS, uh, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China kind of organization. And uh, people are seeing that as another step towards de-dollarization. So there are, there are things going on in the world economy on that, Tom. Absolutely. I've often said geopolitically and particularly militarily, if there's anything more dangerous than being America's enemy, it's being their friend. They always turn in their friends. And you can go back over history from Vietnam to Afghanistan, whatever. And what is happening in the world is the Saudis have turned on the Americans. They're pretty fed up because yeah. America's having this thing saying oil is terrible. Saudis are really terrible. You know, the and MDS is murdering people, which he is. Um, so they're saying, hey, this is this is supposed to be our friend. So they're shifting alliances. You see, they did a deal with Iran, uh, Russia, India, China. The, the world is sort of moving away from this um, waving your finger lecturism they're getting from America. So that's that's going to exacerbate this point of being a world currency at some point in time. They're, they're, they're doing their, but there's no alternative right now. You can't use the EU or the Remimbi or or the EU or any of these things. You can't right. use any of those right now. Yeah, yeah but uh, there is uh, there is a lot of money sloshing around in uh, in uh, the Middle East. So uh, they're they're going to they're going to have their influence over things, including the oil price, I guess. Uh, absolutely. And, and as they say, they're not going to, I think uh, Saudi has said, we're not interested in pleasing America anymore. They're, yeah. they're running their own store. They know America is not for them. 
And it's like if you have a customer in a business and your customer is running around telling everybody what a rotten product you have, eventually you're going to get pretty fed up with that customer. Indeed. And that's the Saudi-America relationship. Speaking of customers, we're going to take a brief break. Uh, we'll be back with our guest, Tom Caldwell, after that. Please stay with us.